there are many ways to start off the new year. Hanging out with friends, hanging out with family, playing video games by yourself. But what if none of that sounds fun? What if instead you take the JavaScript ecosystem and then try to light it on fire? It's not a common one, but it has been done. There is, or maybe more accurately was, an NPM package called everything. Now the NPM page is still present, but the repo is very gone, and this isn't a new project. It's actually many, many years old, but suddenly got revived. But you're probably asking, what is everything? Well, like any other package manager, NPM supports dependencies. This is great. It means developers can make use of other packages and then ship their package relying on those packages. Whatever. But what happens if you make one package that has every other NPM package as a dependency? All 2.5 million packages. Well, that's how you get everything. Now, for context, this is not the first time this has been attempted. All the way back in 2012, we had hoarders. This got on the bad side of the creator of NPM, who uh, just deleted the package, wanted nothing to do with it, and has since come back in a smaller form, but ultimately never reached the levels it wanted to be at. There was also no one left behind a year ago. This got deleted during a malicious code audit and wasn't really that big of a deal. Both of those, though, were fairly tame solutions. This one, though, kind of went all the way. In this incarnation, we have two main protagonists, antagonists, depending on where you stand on all of this being done. Firstly is Trash, the second one being Patrick JS. Now, when it comes to doing something like this, there is a bit of a problem that neither of them realized. Did you know that NPM packages have a size limit? Your package.json file can be no bigger than 10 megabytes. There's definitely more than 10 megabytes worth of packages. The second problem, though, is a package can only have 800 dependencies. So how in the world do you get 2.5 million? So when Theo did his video, he had Trash on as a guest, and Trash explained the entire process. The answer is chunking, and this is completely intended behavior of the NPM system, although it probably shouldn't be used in this way. So you might notice that when you download a giant NPM package, you might download more than 800 dependencies, because the issue isn't 800 dependencies, it is 800 direct dependencies. There's no issue with transitive dependencies. So, just break it down into chunks then. As an example, let's say you want to do this at a much smaller scale. Let's say you want to have 2400 dependencies. This is way too many dependencies for a single package. But what you can do is say, I have three sub packages each of those packages have 800 dependencies. So your main package really only has three direct dependencies. It is the sub packages which aren't going past the limit. They're going to 800. They're allowed to have that, that have all of those packages. That works. And then you can just keep adding more and more and more sub packages. When that first layer has 800 sub packages, then you make sub packages for the sub packages and just Keep expanding that and expanding that and expanding that until you reach 2.5 million transitive dependencies. Now, to me, someone who's not currently involved in this ecosystem, I honestly consider this kind of funny. And it seems like the devs involved kind of think the same as well. They're just joking about it, talking about how long it's going to take to publish. I have an M3 Max. I can't publish the latest 2.5 million packages as dependencies. Like, they're clearly just having fun with this and didn't think this would really get that much attention or really explode like it did. Patrick was talking about meme-driven development and memeing things into existence and just having a bit of fun towards the end of one year and the start of another. But the reason it got so much attention is it caused 
a little bit of a problem for the NPM ecosystem. It made it so you could not unpublish any package. Every package on the NPM database was now locked into the database. Now to understand why it was like that, we need a bit of historical context. All the way back in 2016, there was a web developer that had a bunch of NPM packages. One of them was called Kik, K-I-K, very similar to the instant messaging platform also called Kik. He received an email from his company informing him that they were planning to release their own NPM package and also call it Kik. And they basically said, you will change your package name or we are going to file a lawsuit. So he replied, basically saying, try me. Now, Kick didn't actually want to file a lawsuit because that takes a lot of time, that takes a lot of money, and I have a feeling they thought they might have lost because they were not defending their trademark for a lot of time, and that's usually a good way to lose it. So they then offered to pay him. He said, all right, pay me 30 grand, which... I feel is a pretty good deal for them. Like, that's not that much money. But they didn't want to do that either. But what they did want to do is get the name. So they went to NPM and basically said, Yo, give us this name. Probably saying, we're going to file a lawsuit if you don't. And NPM were like, Okay, have the name. Go ahead. We don't want to deal with you which the developer was not too happy with, and he decided to go nuclear and delete all of his packages, which for most people wouldn't be that big of a deal. Oh, you deleted some packages, who really cares? One of his packages was a notorious NPM package called LeftPad. Now, LeftPad was a very simple package. It was 11 lines long, minus the comments, which padded the left side of a string. Nowadays, there is a built-in JavaScript function to do this. Back then, there wasn't. And to be frank, a lot of developers are very lazy. And even though it's 11 lines long and didn't need any maintenance, a lot of people installed the package. And if they didn't install it, a package they were using installed the package, or a package that that package depended on, installed the package. And by the end of it, there were tens of thousands of packages that transitively depended on it. This was a problem, because when the package got deleted, all of a sudden, none of those packages could be installed. You'll find countless stories from the time and years later about how this one package destroyed the NPM ecosystem. And really, for the period it was gone, it actually did. So the package had to be brought back, and he just lost control of it. Also, NPM implemented the NPM unpublish policy. This is a very, very strict policy, even though there aren't that many rules. For a package less than three days old, do whatever you want. If something happens to depend on it within three days, that's really surprising, but it's probably going to be fine. But most packages are more than three days old. So to get unpublished, no other packages in the NPM public registry depend on it. It had less than 300 downloads over the last week, and it has a single owner slash maintainer. You have to meet all of these conditions, not just a single one. So if you have one dependent that just happens to have 2.5 million other dependencies, you cannot unpublish that package. And the same is true for all of those other packages. So if you ask me, this is a pretty serious problem. However, if NPM actually worked properly, it wouldn't be able to lock down the entire ecosystem. Because if a package depends on a specific version of a package, yes, you can't unpublish the entire thing, but you can still unpublish specific other versions that are not depended on. However, there is a way to say, I depend on every single version of the package. After this got a bit too much attention for Patrick, he released an apology, and in this, explained the major issue. This was on the GitHub, but the GitHub has been deleted, so we'll look at it on this article. Hi all, 
First, just want to apologize about any difficulties this package has caused. We are working to resolve the issues and have contacted NPM regarding support with this matter. See below. We appreciate your patience. I like how Patrick says this as if he didn't cause all of this to happen. Like, it's some third party that did it, not what he was doing. The major issue here is that when a package depends on another package at a specific version, that version cannot be unpublished. We've since realized there is an issue with star versions, aka depending on any slash all versions of another package. So package dash XYZ and then depend on star. Any version of that package is now unable to unpublish. As I previously mentioned, we've reached out to NPM and are hoping they can either A, allow folks to unpublish when the package that depends on them use a star version, B, not permit star versions in public packages going forward, or as a last resort, C, remove our NPM organization entirely and remove all of the packages that are blocking unpublishing. As far as we can tell, there is simply nothing we can do on our own. We can't unpublish the package ourselves because other packages depend on them, and publishing a new version over them doesn't change anything. So even if they release a new version of the package, because the old version still depends on everything, then it doesn't actually change anything because you can still download the old version. Now, as you would expect, a lot of developers were not happy about this repo existing, calling it active sabotage, a trolling campaign, abusing a public repository, and various TOS unfriendly terms. But it does reveal a serious problem with the NPM policy, because it doesn't even have to be to this scale, but literally any user, any basic developer that knows a little bit of how to use NPM can make it so any other package cannot be unpublished. All you do is make a package, make it have a dependency on another package, and say, depend on every single version. And it doesn't matter how small that package is, who it's made by, that package can now never be unpublished. Now, when this happened, a bunch of media outlets reached out to GitHub, and GitHub didn't really want to say anything. We found the project to be in violation of GitHub's acceptable use policies, which prohibit behavior that significantly or continuously disrupts the experience of other users. It was also found to violate the NPM code of conduct. We have resolved the dependency issue, so packages can now be removed if they meet our unpublished criteria, and are working to remove the packages from both the NPM registry and GitHub. Theo also reached out and asked about the star issue. They said in an official statement that it is not a bug and they have no intention of changing it. Okay, so just make a package that depends on every version of something and that's totally okay. That's not a problem. At all. I disagree, but hey, it seems like absolutely nothing is going to change, so... There's no point really worrying about it. Now, it seems like Patrick is taking all of this fairly lightly, joking about there being a uh, flag on his account now because of the removed organization, and also posting CNN memes about a malicious hacker group known as Trash Devs. So, you know, not exactly taking this that seriously, sort of just treating it like a big joke, because look, it kind of is a big joke. It's kind of funny that you can just make a package that depends on everything, and NPM doesn't think it's a bug that that causes every single package to be locked onto the platform. I find it kind of fun to check back into the web development ecosystem and just see what's going on, because it's kind of a disaster, and it seems like every year it only gets worse and more ridiculous, and this is definitely a nice way to start the new year. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, be sure to go check out that Theo video if you've not done so. It was a really good video, and he's much better at making videos than I am. Check it out. Anyway, uh, like the video? Go like the video. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, and pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and please don't actually do this.
But... Like this.